very good morning. You're watching Good Morning Sri Lanka on MTV Sports. It's the 8th of January 2013, a lovely Tuesday morning. But, uh, you know, talking about the weather, it's been a bit dull last night, don't you think? But then again, everyone enjoys the rain once in a while. And I guess, you know, we should have some variety. This is Sri Lanka after all, summer 365, and a bit of surprises here and there. So on today's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the local stories before we come on with the interesting ones that we've got lined up coming your way. And uh, especially as a news item in, in the political arena, uh, you know, there was a development yesterday where we heard that the Court of Appeal has issued a special uh, 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 a statement uh, quashing the PSC report. And following up on that, uh, President Mahinda Rajapaksa has also appointed uh, yet another committee to review the PSC's uh, findings and the report. So committees over committees, I don't know where this is uh, you know, really going to go, but let's hope that uh, it gets resolved soon. And a bit about Sri Lanka and the development of IT. Now, surprisingly, uh, there is going to be an introduction of a computer network that will link up and interconnect all the prisons and detention centers in Sri Lanka. So that's, I think, good news for everyone listening in. And also, um, talking about Sri Lanka and the international arena, there was a Canadian minister who was uh, visiting and who commented that human rights violations are still on. So that's not good news um, in terms of the international image that Sri Lanka uh, you know, projects out there to the world uh, because this comment came on also earlier on in this week. And uh, moving on to some sports news, obviously it's been cricket and a lot of disappointments for the Sri Lanka cricket fans. But then again, uh, you know, Mike Hasse, the greatest batsman ever to walk that field, uh, you know, walked, signed off in style, didn't he? After a win against Sri Lanka and the series win and everything. And he knew just the right time to uh, retire. And I guess, you know, he will be remembered as one of the greatest stroke players of the game. And unfortunately for Sri Lanka, we've dropped down on the, on the ratings. We were at 96 points in the rating table, uh, but we've dropped down by four points. So I'm not sure what the revised position is, but uh, on the rating points is per se, we've uh, lost four points after the loss against Australia. And uh, what's, what's interesting is uh, to look going forward uh, how the youngsters, especially the young three batsmen, although they didn't perform um, you know, exceptionally well in the last series, how they're going to take on uh, the duties with probably a few of the senior players also looking at retirement from the national side in the future. So, you know, let's hope that works out as well. That's a bit of news items coming your way as you start off your morning. But uh, here's something interesting. Now, talking about origami, the first thing that comes to my mind is probably uh, origami is a Japanese folding method. But the first thing that comes to my mind is the origami birds that, you know, we find uh, commonly. But this is something, it's interesting uh, story about how these Japanese folding methods has been used in, in science. And this story is about, uh, it's, it's a bit uh, an in-depth look at uh, what this can derive actually and how there is a specific science behind the entire process. So uh, let's take a look at that one now. Scientists are activating these microscopic sheets of plastic to fold into three-dimensional shapes, a process they call micro origami. The researchers grew connective tissue cells on the seams of origami designs, allowing them to harness the traction force of the cells to fold the plastic sheets into different shapes. In another experiment, the researchers used rat heart cells to shape these tiny origami structures. The team hoped that using the power of cells to fold three-dimensional shapes could one day lead to the engineering of artificial tissues like blood vessels, as well as lay the groundwork for new types of medical devices like stents that could be activated to fold into shape inside the human body. Something very interesting. There we go. Uh, how this will actually uh, help in, in probably medical science, how this will probably help in uh, engineering uh, artificial tissues. Now, artificial tissues and tissue transplant is uh, something that's going to be very directly connected to our next one as well. This is how they've managed to apparently recreate cells made from urine and, you know, uh, put it into their natural uh, form. and make it, you know, actually experiment rather and uh, observe 
the natural phenomena in which these cells reproduce themselves and work in it. And I guess this is also a breakthrough in, in medical science and this is something that will probably be helpful in the future. So let's take a look uh, at the next story, uh, cells made from urine. Interesting, let's take a look. Scientists say they have created pluripotent stem cells from an unlikely source, urine. Stem cell biologist Pei Duan King and his team have been attempting to convert kidney cells, which are found in urine, into stem cells for more than a year. And while they've had some success, the method they've used up until now, which used a retrovirus to reprogram the cells, led to stem cells that were at high risk of forming tumors. But now the researchers say they've made a breakthrough. Instead of using a retrovirus, the team used vectors, a type of DNA molecule useful in transporting genetic information. And they say the results have been promising. Pei says having the ability to generate stem cells from urine could put an end to the controversy associated with embryonic stem cell research, as well as provide researchers with an abundant supply of stem cells to work with. This is unlimited sources of cells. Uh, it's non-invasive and it's more pleasant uh, the whole procedure is more pleasant than supposedly you take a little skin biopsy or even pluck a little into some, needle into somebody. Using the new method, the stem cells formed in a culture in only 12 days, about half the time the process normally takes. And soon afterwards, the stem cells began forming into neural cells. Pei then injected these newly formed neural cells into the brains of newborn rats. He says so far the cells have survived and show no signs of mutations or tumor formation. We have to put those cells into animal model, uh, be it spinal cord injury, be it uh, Alzheimer's disease model, or be it a Parkinson's disease model. And we have to show the cells we have can be efficacious, namely uh, the cells we put in can correct the defects uh, either in the spinal cord or in the brain function. So that's the step we have to go through. Pei and his team plan to continue tweaking their method of generating stem cells from urine. He hopes that one day soon they will have a powerful weapon in the fight against degenerative diseases. There we go. Uh, more and more developments in medical science every day. And this is also something that is uh, really you know, groundbreaking, how, how they managed to use these cells that uh, were taken from urine in order to convert uh, the kidney cells into stem cells. And what, what's, what's saddening in all this, it's a bit of a paradox, is that as much as we are advancing ourselves day in and day out of, uh, in technology and uh, medical discovery, it's, it's not uh, stopped the amount of people you know, suffering from diseases and sicknesses. And something that's really interesting uh, that uh, we discussed uh, recently, I'm sure it'll be aired soon, an interview with uh, Professor Chandra Vikram Singh, who is an expert in astrobiology. He suggested that a lot of the viral infections that we get are actually extraterrestrial. So, you know, stay tuned for more uh, information on that one. But right about now, let's take a short break and we'll be back on Good Morning Sri Lanka with more interesting stories coming your way.